stay in the burg in the cruising cars in black and white drive around my city they stay on patrol all day and night but the hood so jungle city call county to back them up simultaneous crime spontaneous and they can't back them up always making headlines on fox carolina about the robberies and murders and how the porkers can't find them I guess this is a uh, episode. I don't care. It episode doesn't. Episode four. Uh, what, whatever episode in OLB TV the, this uh, is. This is like episode two, two or three. Two or three. What, whatever. Maybe you see how professional we are this morning. <laughs> but uh, here we are with none other than Captain Kirk himself of Starship Music. What up? What up? Um, so, getting this right out of the way. Go ahead and give your, uh, your your backstory, a little bit of your history. Backstory, history, uh, started making music about <laughs> seven, eight years ago, got into it, uh, dating a chick, she asked me what my favorite job was, could be, and shit like that, yeah. she said, anything, what would you want to be, and I told her, music producer, and next day she went, bought me Reason 5 when it just came out, and a keyboard and a sound pack, and kind of started going from there, home studio, home computer. Didn't know what the hell I was doing at all. <laughs> no clue. So, uh, what, what were some of the... Do you, do you have any memories of those early sessions at all? Yeah, early sessions. Not even having a microphone or interface recording into webcam microphones. And mm. no compression, no effects, no nothing. Just just having a passion for it, you know, and to thrive, wanting to do something one day and be something one day. Uh Audacity was involved, us. Oh yeah, of course it was. <laughs> you know, every new new beginner always has like one of those easy programs. You no, know, yeah. it's too complicating for everybody. <laughs> for sure, for sure. So, uh, so what were, uh, what were some of your early inspirations, like beat wise, like people, beat wise, people got, who like you just heard them were like, damn, like yeah. like Pharrell, especially like all the percussions, because you don't hear percussion like that, like kind of old school hip hop heads. So I like Alchemist, that like New York vibe, right, right, DJ Premier. Uh, True. Timbaland, like old school big heads. Like I like Dre, but he's a little bit before my time. I was still real young when he was getting real big. Yeah. But uh, I don't know, just anything that has your own style. Like if you can like name a beat, like oh that's a Swiss beat type beat because you hear that certain type of chants he uses right, or something right. like that, and you know just right. people who are unique in their days coming up like that. Yeah. And use more than seven inch like two instruments in their song. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So um, what kind of uh, what kind of music do you usually uh? draw inspiration from as far as uh putting putting things together like let's say like you know old soul for example yeah. or something like that i like yeah any type of oldies man anything that has some passion that can make you give you goosebumps when you hear it you know yeah. you bring anything old school like that that got music to where it is today and then make it modern with you know certain drums or synthesizers and effects anything that's like that you know i was raised on classic rock and oldies and country music so I don't listen to no more country at all, you know, but yeah. it's a, it definitely inspired me in certain ways, you know, what not to make in my music. <laughs> <laughs> right. And I think uh, I think pretty much anybody who grew up down here is like, you're going to hear a bunch you're of country You're going to hear music. everywhere you go. E- everywhere. Like, I think, uh, I think ver- pretty much everyone around here knows at least part of the words to you never even call me by my name by David <laughs> Allen Coe. It's like it's like standard. You have to know the words yeah, to that if you live sure. down here. Yeah. Don't you call me darling, darling. <laughs> See? Everybody knows this. <laughs> it's just, yeah, as I'm saying, like, it's part of growing up being around here. You know, it's part of the culture. Like, old school country music. Yeah. So, it's nothing wrong with that. It's just not my particular type of yeah. music I listen to these days, you know. More definitely hip-hop head, I would call myself. True, true. Not quite trap music, but I like trap. You know, I like the beats. Oh, uh, there's some there's some trap artists that like just legit have bars though. Like, yeah, that's one, true. One of my favorite dudes right now is Max O'Cream. Never heard of him. Like dude out of Houston. Houston? Like he um, like it just it's just straight savage trap music, but is he's so picturesque with the bars. Okay, I got like, you. Yeah. It's like it's it's like you know some people. <coughs> They, you know, they throw the baby out with the bathwater when it comes to, like, trap music. It's like, wait, hold on, just because you hear the, the hi-hats and 808s yeah, yeah. like that. It's like, give it a <laughs> second, give it a second. Yeah. Yep, yep. <clears throat> but um, you've worked with a lot of artists at this point. Uh, do you, you have any, any favorites? Favorite? Probably one of my favorite artists I work with is PR Heavy, man. He's always energetic, got good rhymes, good energy in the studio, sure. you know, like, always good vibes. We get work done quick and easy as everything flows smoothly. He's definitely one of my favorite, man. I definitely shout out PR Heavy. I definitely <coughs> fucks with him. For sure. True, true. And I'll say fucks with people a lot, so. I definitely <laughs> like, the, like the guy a lot, you know? Yeah, yeah. I like him and my boy Ray Vega. Definitely give him a shout out. He's good. 
He's real good. He just dropped his album. I just released it about three weeks ago on my SoundCloud, Ray's yeah. World. So that was nice. We got about 20 songs and narrowed it down to 16 and narrowed it down to 12 and went back to 16. Took a little while to get it up, but it's a nice CD, man. It shows a very good side of him. And so I think it's a new age of music when it comes to him, you know? True, true. For sure. Uh, has there in, has there been any artists that uh, you worked with that kind of um, let me see that that, that have kind of surprised you or surprised or, ta- or taught you anything? Yeah, uh, shout out to Kane. The first time I met him, we were in uh, where were we at? Ground Zero, some hip hop showcase. I think a Blizzified event, hmm. something like that. And uh, met him through a mutual friend, and never seen the kid rap. Heard him, and just heard him like once or twice, and then. He came over and we I produced three songs for him, man. And when I heard him flow for the first time, man, did not expect that from him, man. A talented guy, for sure. Yeah. Like, definitely got bars, man. You, I wasn't expecting I didn't think he was going to have bars like that. And I've never even told Kane this, so he probably heard for the first time on this. But, yeah, he surprised me. He had bars, for sure, man. He's very talented, man. Very, very good. I definitely give him a shout on that. On Somebody that, like, surprised me on their style and how they rapped and stuff like that. This is my first person from the bird. <laughs> Bad producer. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Don't worry, that's gonna get cut out. <laughs> You're good. You're good. <laughs> so, uh, so uh, what, what are some what are some dream artists that you'd like to work dream with? Dream artists, um, Andre three thousand, mm-hmm. definitely him mm-hmm. for sure. Always wanted to make a track with Andre. For some reason, uh, I mean, obviously Eminem, I like Eminem, Andre, and Gutta Gutta from uh, Little Wayne's group. Back when they made all those SQ CDs back in the day when he jacked everybody's beats. Huh. And what was that like? Maybe late '90s, early 2000s. I don't know if you ever heard Squad SQ series. Uh, I mean, I was no, like, well, I never even heard of that. Yeah, you should check it out. It's about five, six CDs, something like that. But yeah, Gutta, and I don't know, probably a new artist, like a new age artist. If I had to name one, shit, I couldn't even name one. Tell you the truth, I don't know. Um, I'd say J Cole, but he's not really like my type of music that I would produce. I mean, I'd mess with R&B music like that, but. I'd definitely go to Andre, man. That'd be my dream artist. Andre 3000. That's a good one. Even though you don't hear him coming out a lot more new stuff, you know. And that's a damn shame. He's still, man, probably one of the best ever. I oh, think yeah. personally. Yeah. For sure. uh, one of my favorite uh, questions I like to ask rappers especially is like, rock him versus Andre 3000. Go. Yeah. <laughs> and like that, that'll kind of... Throw him off a little bit? You can, well, what I've noticed so far is that uh, people... Over a certain age, they say rock him, and then people under that certain age, they say three thousand. That's what I was about but to say. everybody there's always an age goes. cut off right there because Rock was like real early MC. <laughs> yeah. Andre, no, he's been around twenty plus years. Ninety four was you no know, the first CD they dropped, but was King. He's probably here or close or something. Yeah, you mean that? Yeah, go ahead. Hello. Possible edit. Y'all back? Alright. I got that in there real quick. I love Andre, man. That's my man. Alright, pause for the calls. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay. Okay. Alright, so, uh, quick intermission there. Uh, (laughs) But anyway, uh, let's see. We're talking about uh, legends, dream artists. Yeah. Um, We were Andre, I believe. Yeah, um, you got, uh, you got any, uh, plans to put together like maybe a starship music mixtape or something like that with a bunch yeah, of different I thought artists. about man like maybe having just like a uh, more the more like a Captain Kirk production mixtape where I just kind of get a bunch of random people yeah nobody in particular you know what I'm saying it's a mixed group of people show off the local talents for everybody maybe me just mix and master everything but not like just you know, I have my starship people on and everything but I have a lot of other people on there too as well yeah like this guy over here <laughs> yes, for sure. He's one of them. Hey, baby. Hey. But yeah, man, I just like to be collective, man, especially with local artists around upstate, man. It's time true, some true. people up here get on the map. You know, we got some people Definitely. doing some things lately, so getting Greenville, you know, just upper state in the, in the right area, so not the right area, but the right movement. What is yeah, it? Yeah. Um, oh, some fuzzies and shit. So, uh, I got, I got, uh, <laughs> I gotta touch on the whole uh, Starship and Captain Kirk thing. Yeah. Like, so obviously you're a big Star Trek fan. Man, not really, man. I don't really, really watch oh, really? Star Trek that much. No, I, f- I figured for sure you was like, ah, oh, man, like no. there's like, because I mean you got the Enterprise right behind you, man. Oh yeah, like, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why I call it studio. You know what I mean? It's the Enterprise. If I'm Captain Kirk, then the, what else would you call it a studio than the Enterprise? True, you know? true. It's just like me and my boy Ray Vega came up with Starship music, just sitting around collectively 
as I said, about seven, eight years ago, talking, chilling, drinking, you know, hanging out. Yeah. Just started coming up with ideas when we first started it, and just got on Starship music, like out of this world music, like new age, new level, new time, you know. True. That true. whole vibe, but and then we just started coming up with nicknames for me and whatever, whatever, and. James T, you know what I'm saying? He's a turn up, you know, came up. So. I like that. <laughs> yeah, that's like a little name they gave me back in the day, so that's why I'm taking it back. But yeah, I mean, cool. I never really got to Star Trek a lot. I like Star Wars, you know, but... Ah, that that's interesting. The, yeah. the nerd in me finds that very interesting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for sure, you know. But, um, so let me see, uh... <clears throat> Yourself personally, uh, I, I mean, obviously you make you know beats and stuff like that. But what is there anything else that you mixing and mastering, production and beat making mostly? Don't no. sing, don't rap, nothing like that. Really? But a- any any plans of maybe dabbling in something like that? Maybe starting to starting like start some, do some, some chants with some, some, some or own, like, that? like your own project or something? Nah, probably not gonna happen. Huh. You know? So so you, you I like just... the more technical side of it. You know what I mean? Like true. I originally wanted to make beats. That's what I started doing. But then I started recording vocals. Got a lot better at that. I started making money from it. So I just kind of been doing that for the most part here lately, for sure. Still want to make beats though. Still dibbling down with making beats. I got you know. Beat machine and keyboards and all that stuff and sound packs, but I like mixer master man, I like helping people out and making them sound good. So, um, what what was it about that? That uh, what was it about it that drew you into that specifically? With the mixing and mastering mm-hmm. aspect of it, uh, I don't know. I just got really good at it, and it's, it's still the same thing as making beats, but instead of using sounds, it's just like people's voices. And the whole balancing them out and adding effects and making sure everything's equalized and no compression, you know, all that good stuff. So it's it's, it's just it's a different aspect, but it's still musical minded. So. I still yeah. got to sit in the studio and do what I enjoyed was creating new music, so. Yeah. And I mean, you, you pretty much taught yourself everything you know. Never or? went to school, yeah, man. It's trial and error and YouTube nice. videos. Ah. Lots of YouTube videos. Ah, yes. Yeah. yeah. It goes a long way, man. It does. I often forget that, that YouTube is actually a treasure trove of you, treasure of tutori- trove, man. tutorials. Could, some people will know some sh- shitty videos out there to watch, but you search through them. You can find some pretty good people, man. Yeah, true, true. Some good people that like do busy B work network or something like that busy b b u s y b e he's real like gives good descriptions of making beats tight beats and like you know effects all that stuff and he's really got a good voice he don't talk as fast as me he's a lot slower you can understand him better sometimes and he does really good work man i've learned a lot from him and just trial and error man trial and error it goes a long way true i, I agree with that definitely. and then we did 30 for 30 i'm not sure if you've ever heard about that we did 30 songs in 30 days, and mm. that just that gap of those 30 days from where I started to where I ended is a big difference on how my production was, because I did it every day with new people, with new beats on the spot. That day we recorded, they wrote the beats, you know, I mixed and mastered everything, we put a, a song out a day for 24, every day for 30 days. Like almost putting putting yourself through like a kind of producer boot camp. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, That's really something cool. like that, yeah, for sure. That's really cool. Lots man. of long nights, you know what I'm saying, but it helped me get to, it helped me thrive and like, Doing it every day, all day, kind of it keeps your mind in, and it doesn't get off of making music. Cause where you have like going out partying, and getting fucked up with family things. I mean, I still chill with my family. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. I don't sound like Kanye in the closet all summer and shit. <laughs> but I still do my thing, but I stuck to music. That's always on my mind. So I was always yeah. thinking of new ideas, new concepts, not getting lazy with it. Everybody cool, has their cool. times where they're up and down, you know. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. That was definitely an up moment for sure. Staying busy with it. That's a that's a nice little what about influences bit of knowledge influences for influences on what like mixing and mastering and production or just all, of all the music and things like yeah. that. I was telling him, man, listen to Andre three thousand back in the day, man. I think he was before his time, man, for sure. Yeah, and like, uh, and even if you listen to like the first Outcast album. So to, to the last music. one, yeah. it's like a different person. But yeah, for sure. Like you can hear the progression of both of them, really. But but him especially, like going from, you know, like always being dope, but then like going into like a next level. Yeah, for sure. Like, there was no, yeah. I think what that second CD was Equimina and then AT Aliens, or was AT Aliens? Uh, it was AT Aliens, was the, was the second, second one, one yeah. and then Equimina was yeah. after that. Yeah, then Stank on you. Yeah, shit. yeah, I think that was. Stank on you. That was like the last was original one, and then they had that Roses, whatever that double CD come out. Yeah, yeah. I think they fell off. A yeah, well, they there, got man. popular. But, yeah, they got more popular. Yeah. Yeah. So. Well, and they had to, and you know, and it yeah. was just it's what everybody else does. They evolve. Well, you know, three thousand wrote probably 
probably the greatest pop song of our generation with Hey Ya. Yeah. yeah. That song. Absolutely. I think I still like their most played song. Like, like, yeah. Them. I mean, at, like, that song is undeniable. It was also weird. Everybody shit. likes you it. Listen to it. I mean, you know, like, <laughs> word for word. Yeah, like, yeah. Yeah. Dress, yeah. <laughs> like every, or something like that. Like, right? Everybody loves that song. Like, old white dudes <laughs> love that song. <laughs> like, I mean, <laughs> just, like, <laughs> one of two ways yeah. before yeah. Erica Badu and after. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Andre, and definitely Shout out Eric Wu Tang. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. Me a lot. Oh, yeah. yeah. My brother's a diehard Wu Tang fan. Diehard, so. I grew up listening to them a lot. Listening to what lot with my older brother listened to. So. Which, sure. which, which, um, which one was your favorite? My favorite out of all of them? I like ODB because he was real random and crazy, but as far as lyricist level, man, probably Raekwon or Ghostface. Hey, Raekwon's True. up there. Raekwon yeah. is definitely yeah. G-O-A-T, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Oh. For sure. That damn I like Bobby fit. Digital too and RZA was pretty dope because yeah. he did the production well, the beats dude. and everything yeah RZA know? was on a whole nother level than yeah. everybody else that was rocking with mm-hmm. Wu-Tang man RZA really was on a on a production level you know he, he he did come in as an artist and that's you know where he got his mainstay but yeah. it's Nah, he didn't yeah. need Erica Badu. <laughs> Erica Badu needed Riz. Yeah, she did. Yeah, she did. <laughs> nah, man, but he, you know, he can't just with the with the movies that he's come out with, with the scripts that he's written. I personally yeah. really like the man with the Iron Fist, bro. That would I know a lot of people talk. I know a lot of people talk shit about it. I love it, man. I, I mean, but that's but that's what I grew up with, though. Like you know, yeah. watching those old school kung fu movies. Yeah. But Can I hit that? yeah. And honestly, wishing, I'm kind of parched at the moment. You know? <laughs> but wishing that there was, you know, these kind of fantastical things that you saw in like Power Rangers, but wishing it was in the Kung Fu movies, you know what I mean? And that's what he did. He, he took those. He brought Kung Fu to hip hop pretty much. Exactly. Man. That, yeah, sampling, I mean, that old scratchy vinyl, yeah. like, well, but still, like, basic drums, man. They put too much into it, but. The things he thought of to put together is what mm-hmm. made him, like, amazing. Well, yeah, like I said, it's a production. It's a production, well, it's a production thing. You're right. Mm-hmm. The Wu Tang Collection, those re released. Chinese movies, yeah, yeah, financed it. Oh, yeah, that's why it's got Wu Tang. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. pretty dope. Yeah, and uh, man, like Bobby Digital is really one of my all time favorite yeah. albums. And that, Digital Bullet, or the one that has him like it's like a white cover with him busting out the cover. I forget the name of that one. Yeah, the Bobby Digital in stereo. Yeah, Bobby Digital, Bobby Digital yeah. in stereo. Yeah. yeah, that that that's, one, that that's one, that's one that's that one's legendary to me. And Supreme Clientele, that Ghost Face. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. That like both of those. Iron Man. Yeah, that, that one too. Dope. Like both of those. That's Jizz right there. I think that's one of my favorite ones. Um, Digital Bullet right there. Well, as, a sword. as a seasoned producer and you know engineer, uh, what is your opinion on why you think hip hop changed so drastically from? say, the late 90s, early 2000s to now. What do you think motivated that? What motivated that? Uh, Other than money. Shit, T-Pain and Gucci, man. <laughs> <laughs> you know Gucci with the trap and T-Pain with the auto-tune. Uh-huh. I mean, because once that shit got real popular, man, everybody started doing it. And then Future came out, started blowing up. And then just all these young mm-hmm. cats just got off the whole lyrical content. And then, yeah, people making such fire-ass beats. And there's so many people making beats because it's gotten so much easier to create beats on an industry true. level, you know? You don't have to... Spend all the crazy money, which you do if you want to do it official and like have it run properly. But yeah. you can pirate anything; it kind of freezes and crashes and shit. We've all been there. We've all done it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You're above that now. Though, make right? it as easy as it was, and people just to like, you know, talk rap. And then Chief Keef blew up and changed it, changed it a lot when he came out. That's when I think a lot of the new new age kind of gained off of him and like all that auto tune and fire beats. That's it, man. And then Riff Raff, if Riff Raff can make it, <laughs> I love Riff Raff, though. Don't get me wrong. That's my man. I love Riff Raff. He's a billionaire doing but, dumb shit, but it is but what it is. But a perfect example of he got fire-ass beats and some catchy little lyrics and shit that are, you know, you know they're disgusting. You know they're terrible. But you can't help but nod your fucking head to that shit as it's they playing. They found a loophole. Yeah. <laughs> and it helps realizing yeah, yeah, yeah. that he's like kind of a satirical artist as well. Yeah, but, that's true. Or at least partly satirical. I don't think he tried to come off that way. It's yeah. just what the, what we have turned him into. He tried to do it just like everybody else was doing it. I don't it, know, but. man. I don't know. It seemed a little on the nose to me. It seemed like he's... But, I don't know. That's pure speculation. But, uh... Fuck fo- speculation. That's fact! <laughs> uh, follow up to that question. And, and speaking of speculation, where do you see hip hop going in the next five to ten years? In the next five to ten years, damn, I don't know. Well, whether whether it be around here or just, just hip hop period as like a yeah. genre of music, yeah. uh, 
I see us kind of maybe starting to get a little bit more lyrical. We see some decent people coming out, you know. Oh, come back around. Like, I mean, obviously, everybody knows everybody calls out Kendrick and J. Cole for right. two super lyrical people trying to bring it back. But I think Sooner some of the new age people are catching on that. But you're actually going to have that split yeah, of trap music and then people who like lyrical music. Now that you have your old school hip hop heads and the new age, like trap music, and just they listen to the beats and the repetitiveness of the hooks and stuff like that. Right. So, but I don't know. I don't think it's going to get too bad, hopefully. So I'm always going to listen to. <laughs> Hip hop, you know, it's always gonna be a part of me and who I am and yeah. shit. So, and, and plus, you know, things go in cycles, so I think it'll definitely get back to yeah. more lyrical stuff. Yeah. Well, go ahead. If you let, me, like, uh, if I can just interject for a second. Right, right on, right on. If you can, if you watch that, like you said, that 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 loop of kind of what happens, not just with hip hop, but with music in general. Yeah. You have this core creation, and with hip hop, it was uh, it was hype man introducing a DJ, yeah. and that was a lot what, of live DJ scratching, making yeah. the beat. Well, that's what hip hop was. Yeah, you, know that, right. you know, taking it, taking the art of DJ beats, all that shit, and, and then, then mixing it, it up, it and then add some drums and yeah. some scratches to it. And you got a hype man out there with a microphone, yeah. and he had he had some catchy things to say to mm -hmm. get the crowd hype, and then boom, here's your DJ. Well, after a little bit of a time, that cycle rolled through to now it's that DJ introducing the MC. Yeah. And the MC is, you know, the guy that has the thing dropped for him. Yeah. Well, the kind of birthing canal we're in right now is the merging of both worlds. And also with hip-hop, from there's original hip-hop, and now it merges. You hear a lot of... EDM music and coming into hip hop. So well, that's like, the DJ wobbles. part. Yeah. Like the, as Even age, country. As music progresses and changes through time, as you said, everything's gonna progress and yeah. sound. And it's a meshing. Yeah, 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 yeah. And once even, we find even that, even country has been stealing shit from hip hop. Oh, well, like, I mean, just, or vice versa. You or, see, with the, the Georgia line, or you look <laughs> at Usher. He did the <laughs> remix to that other country song. He did a remix to two different country songs, yeah. and really? they came out. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. Huh. And, and it was a, it oh, was yeah, a, a, a remix. That shit blew off the charts. I don't like it very much. I don't like that slower shit. Like I, that. I liked it. I can't even lie, dude. Yeah, and 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 you know, I work with a bunch of old white dudes who don't listen to anything but country all day. So. I've heard the song before, you know. Decent in all of them. I mean, not my favorite, but he's making money, though. So I guess that's what it's about. If you're making money, then you're successful. You know, that's how you He found his niche, man, and now he's rocking with it. Yeah, there's a mark. There's a market for everything. Perfect example, Insane Clown Posse. Oh, yeah. well, I mean, I'm a juggalo, and, 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 and ICP is what got no me. No kidding. Shut the fuck up. So, and that's I what, think the psychopathic <laughs> record, the, the, the story of psychopathic <laughs> records, say what you want to about Insane Clown Posse, all the artists, back in the gym. but the yeah. way that they yeah. put yeah. that record yeah. label together, yeah. it's not really brilliant. Good. Yeah. Pure hard work and just persistence. Yeah. Like... I, I have to applaud them for that. Cause well, what they did just, was they, they took they some did, crazy... They, they got some diehard ass fans. They took a crazy ass concept and, and then took it to... They and literally they got in a van and took it to people. And went, yeah, the Here's, check out this tape. Check out this tape. Yeah. Check out this tape. Yeah. And then that little percentage went... That shit blew up. The, that little Those small percentage bodies. went, oh man, I fuck with yeah. this weird yeah, ass shit. That was before social media and all that shit. There wasn't no Facebook. Yeah. I was just word of mouth and doing shows and... Good business. And I mean, they're literally worldwide. Yeah. You know what I mean? So. so they got like people. It, it's it's weird, but that's what makes them unique. Don't talk like about them. my family. Like <laughs> We're going to fuck up shit in this motherfucker. It's, Here okay. We go. it's okay if you don't know how magnets work. Yeah. What? It's okay. I will kill you in your ball sack right it's now. It's fine. I'll kill you right <laughs> in your ball sack. No, I mean, as I said, but they're unique. They're different, but that's good, though, because that's what makes you... Well, they found their niche. Yeah. Right? yeah, yeah, yeah. You know I mean, before it was cool to go on stage wearing masks or face paint or... Because it still wasn't cool years after they were doing it. It's still not cool. Yeah. Bitch, it is. You, you don't have, you don't have certain people doing it. Like, you see, you see, like, look at Tech Nine. Tech Nine took that whole, you know, he grew up with that. that. That was a major influence, and he's not one to shy away from saying that Psychopathic Records had a definite influence on what he did with strange music. But he had a different idea, he had a different concept, more of a hip hop genre instead of like a hip core genre whatever you want to call it um, <laughs> but, um, but I mean if you look at if you look at what he's done as an artist he is the highest paid inter, uh, what, independent artist out there yeah, yeah. Period. Hell they yeah. took strange music. Forbes list. And he's doing the same thing that we're doing with 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 uh, Noli B as a collective, but just just with. You know, his, I watch that strange music freestyle. And they're all up on the roof, and it has all of its artists yes. on it. 
I forget, yes. it's like strange, strange music cipher or something. Yeah. That shit's fire. That, Ritz, that dude with the yeah. fucking crazy yeah. hair, he yeah. went, uh, and that's one of my favorite like rappers. And, uh, raps and like Seth's crew, they're dope yeah. as fuck yeah. too, yeah. man. Yeah. Like strange music, some, whole roster. That's a lot of time I've seen the first time I've seen a lot of them, but they were all pretty good. They all yeah. had unique, different. They were very different. And yeah. that's what he's going at. They were fire though, man. That shit was fire. He wanted something that was good. But different, and well, he did it. You know? Well, before before we go off on a tangent, just oh, nerding shit, I out, forgot we're doing a nerding out about now. music. Let me wrap. We're up all nolly bees, yeah. so we're just chilling. We're, yeah, we're, we're all, <laughs> yeah, we're all just nerd about to fully nerd out about music. So let me anybody kill it though. Please, you dead homie. I definitely have to give a shout out to Run the Jewels, man. That's probably one of my favorite new age. Run the Jewels is my shit, man. I saw them live at the Masquerade like two years ago. Two two just came out. Man, it's probably my favorite. Like, oh, LP is amazing, man. I, yeah. That's when I just got into him was about two years ago. I didn't know he's been out for fucking ever, pretty much. Oh, that's ever, forever. Fine. Man, yeah, same like, here, man. So oh. I've gotten into him and a lot of that. Like, like, you, to my brothers, it's yeah. a lot of underground. He will listen to no mainstream. This is a lot of underground lyrical <laughs> rap. And I'm more of like the beat. I like beats mm-hmm. as a producer, you know, I've always, as a kid. Listen to beats of songs rather than lyrics and shit like that. So yeah. I was always drawn to, drawn to a different type of music, I guess. Yeah, because like, if it's, I mean, if you've already heard it before, it's not that interesting. <laughs> it's not, or it's not as interesting. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and wrap this thing up so we can, uh, you know, continue to nerd out. And, and not, and, and, not, and not have to and not have to think about oh we're working here. Nully B baby free freestyle Friday <laughs> is coming from me. Starship yeah. Music working man, real soon. Sure. But uh, go go ahead and you know <laughs> here's the part where the floor is yours to, to, to tell people about you know the projects you got yeah, coming as out. Kate whatever was saying you want in the background to. man we start doing a thing put out a freestyle every Friday from somebody locally around here I'm gonna mix and master it for free you know it costs nothing. That's why say, I'm that, show. say that part over. Say it over. Say it Listen to everybody. It's gonna be free. All you gotta do is get in touch with me. Send me an email, like a send me sh- like a sh- shout out on any type of social media. Starship Music, Captain Kirk Productions, gonna do freestyles. I got beats. You can pick a beat. It can be a written, just all the way through, more than sixteen bars, no hook. You know, just a straight all the way through. I'm gonna. Try to put one out every Friday. If it gets busy, we can do it more than Fridays, you know? You know, I would like to maybe more often than donate people. some beats to this. If yeah, that's let me cool. know. If, I'd like to whatever, donate some whatever. money to this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, mean, I can produce it. I have this place to do it at, you know what I'm saying? I'm in a decent location right right by downtown here in this area, so... Yeah. I, mean, and, and I just want to kind of show off local talent and show off. And y'all see this nice ass setup this man's yeah, got. It's not too. the best, but it's a little official. Song, you know? Official. Yeah. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. It's like it don't come overnight, man. It, it took a long time getting piece by piece, but you know, yeah. you just gotta. I can relate. Yeah, yeah. You know how it goes. Any artist could knows that. You know, to get their utensils to create their art it takes time, it takes money, mm-hmm. passion. I didn't make no money from this for the first five and a half years till I got my first even twenty hours off recording somebody or a beat or studio time or. Whatever you want to call it, yeah. you know what I mean? So you just gotta. Well, it's not about the money for any of us, but no. if we want to do what we love to do, we have to rely on the community yeah, around sure. us right. to want to 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 do business right. with us. Because you so, want to be strong as your team. So if you have people striving, you stay motivating you and then helping you in like other different artistic like, spec. Like, so can know? I ask? And this is purely off of just you know promoing Noli B. Yeah. What kind of idea do you have? That us as a collective, this, these four people sitting in this room right now, as Noli B, <laughs> what do you think we're going to do to hip-hop in the next five years? We're going to change it up, man. We're going to bring out a new package, a new type of way to get your music out, a new type of way to get your videos, get photography, get production, all of that, you know? So. I'm wearing <laughs> face paint. Do what? Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> no, you don't have to wear no face paint. Yeah, in in right. face paint, I have like. I'm the only paint. one who face would potentially out. come out with face paint. <laughs> I've, I've, come, I've come out with, with face paint before. Yeah. Okay, well, now. Of course, I, I mean, I've played. Second I've, played, played I've, played I've played like black metal, right. though, so. Yeah. Well, that's yeah. true. Yeah. If you're like Denny Bourget, <laughs> that's not face paint. paint. <laughs> that's <laughs> that's <laughs> Satan's poop on your face. But I think no one, like your band as a collective, I think we all bring some individual to the table. You know, we're all good at one certain thing, but we all have a. A lot of similar ideas that we need each other's help to. So you find people that you're cool with, they can get along with, chill and kick it, you know, and do what you love, do your passion, and help people out at the same time, you know, and help your city, you know. Nothing wrong with that. It's hard to get. Oh, yeah. It's hard to get that team that has the whole collective of everything. And here we are. Here we are. You know what I'm saying? And that's what I'm just saying. That's why, for instance, I'm trying to get the free the Freestyle Friday going, you know. I just want to help people out. Just kind of get there. Maybe they don't have the production or have this or have that, you know what I'm saying? So... That's gonna help get their good. Have at least that one track they can show good production, 
No. Oh, as I said, I'm not the best at producing, but as you know, we got videos. You're a lot you better than a lot of other people around here. <laughs> so, you may not be the best, but you're a lot, a lot better than local. I've got a lot of work to learn, you know what I mean? So... Got a lot of work you, to learn. I, I, I've you, heard no matter this how saying, good you are in art, you can always get better. Well, oh, and that, yeah. that's oh, the yeah. point of the saying. If you wake up one day and you go to work or you go to do something that you consider work, you know, you put effort into it, yep. and you can't learn anything new that day, yep. you're done. You should yep. give up. And that's an ancient old saying, no, thousands of years old. If you can't learn well, anything, you said, it's new, not a, just a job; it's a passion. It's, absolutely. Something, it's something you enjoy doing. You know, so. you have to have the love. As much as I hate hearing the same goals over and over and over and over a thousand times, but the outcome is priceless, you know. Let's get them All hashtags. Hard work Let's get them hashtags. Hashtag Counterkirk Productions. Hashtag Starship Music. Hash one, no one likes your band. N-O-L-Y-B. Word. You know what I'm saying? That's my main hashtags right there. Damn. Shout out Janky J and PR Heavy. Janky J, PR Heavy. You know, Ray Vega, Chief Heavy. G. Ray, okay. My boy Dirty's about to drop his album, and we're getting some copies. We should have in the next week. So... And what, what's the typical products. price that you ask on a CD for any kind of promotion you're doing for any of your artists? What kind of what's the typical price? Like you ask? as far as like uh, mixing, and mastering, and studio time, I'm not really gonna charge, but like, I mean, it depends if you buy block sessions, you buy by the hour, how many tracks, but so you're so you so you can do um, any kind of yeah, dealing and wheeling, sure. wheeling, right? For sure. Awesome. Set awesome. up deals, man. We we gotta be set up something for sure. Cool, cool. Always down to networking, you know, help like minded people out. Because you right. might have something I need from them, so if you know if they have that and I can help them, you know, we can always barter and trade and you know, network. That's what it's all about. You gotta love the barter system. Yeah, you do. You got to. And on that note, the yeah. barter system.